how could we have been bumping around without sight for thousands or millions of years if we've evolved when really it needed to be functioning from the word go? Well, yes, all right, I'll, I'll, I will answer that, that question. Um, certainly, you're absolutely right, the eye is a most remarkable organ and it does the same sorts of things that these television cameras do. It does um, instant focusing, it does instant stopping down with the iris diaphragm, it's, it's got um, full colour, three, three colour vision, just like modern televisions uh, have, um, and it is a remarkably beautiful, it's not totally flawless, there are interesting flaws, interesting imperfections which actually are revealing. Nevertheless, it does work very well, and an engineer would um, give it somewhat high marks for being well, quote, designed. Now, you raise the question, doesn't it all have to be working before, it'll wo before it'll, it's any, any good? How could we bump along for millions of years with only half an eye? That's a bit of a fallacy, because actually, um, only a quarter of an eye, only a hundredth of an eye, is better than nothing. You can make a, s a slowly climbing ramp of improvement from just the very rudiments of vision, just say being able to tell the difference between light and shade, nothing more than that, right up to the perfection of a human eye or the eye of a hawk, say. And in order for evolution to explain that, all, all we need is that there should be a, a ramp of improvement where every step, a hundredth of an eye, two hundredths of an eye, three hundredths of an eye, etc., fifty percent of an eye, fifty-one percent of an eye, each step has got to be an improvement on the one that went before. And it's easy to see why that would be. You start by being able to tell whether there's a shadow, whether it's night or day. Shadow's useful, it could be a predator m moving overhead in the sea. Um, night or day is obviously useful for all sorts of purposes. Then you could imagine a cup. Um, instead of just having a flat sheet of light-sensitive cells, it just, the edges turn up into a cup. Now, the cup means that if there's light coming from that direction, it hits that part of the eye. If there's light coming from that direction, it hits that part of the eye. So already the animal can tell the direction from which light is coming and the direction from which a shadow is coming. So we, we haven't got an image yet. All we've got is the direction of light. Now the cup can steadily and slowly over evolutionary time close over until you end up with a little hole at the top. And the little hole at the top, the same principles working all the way, that light coming from that direction hits that part of the retina and from that direction hits this part of the retina. But because there's a hole, it's rather more precisely, not exactly focused, but um, light from there hits there, light from there hits there, light from there hits there because it's got to get through the hole. We're moving towards a pinhole camera. Now, a pinhole camera, if you make the hole small enough, and remember we're having a smooth gradient of closing up the hole, if you make the hole small enough, then it makes a sharp, focused image. The trouble with a pinhole camera is that the image is very dim because very little light can get through the pinhole. What you need is a lens. Um, because what a lens does is gather light from different directions and focus it on a point. Instead of ha it having to go right through the middle of the hole, it can be gathered from a wider range of sources. Now, um, a lens is not difficult to arrange. Any old chunk of, set of transparent gubbins will do the job better than a pinhole. So once again, we've got a slow, gradual improvement. Any old lump of gubbins, transparent, is better than nothing, and then the lens simply improves its shape gradually, 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 gradually. It's got to be gradually. Every step has got to be a slight improvement over the previous one. You get a lens. Um, Can I just ask you, though, Richard? Yes. Uh, how long did this process take? Well, that's very interesting. I mean, we, we've got um, hundreds of millions of years to play with because that's what geological time gives us. I mean, it, we've got maybe a billion years since the first eye since the first focusing eye appeared. 